All right, everybody, welcome back. So the next example asks us to find the equation of a quadratic function that whose graph passes through the points minus four comma minus 21, minus one comma three, and three comma seven. So uh, recall what a quadratic function is. That's one of the form f of x equals to ax squared plus bx plus c. And now if its graph is going to pass through these points, the first coordinate is the x coordinate, the second coordinate is the y coordinate, the f of x, right? Then we'll have to have that ax squared plus bx plus c has this guy that f of minus four is minus 21, f of minus one equals to three, and f of three equals to seven. So in terms of a, b, and c here, that means that a times the quantity minus four squared plus b times minus four plus c equals to minus 21. And a times the quantity minus one squared plus b times minus one plus c equals to three. And a times three squared plus b times three plus c equals to seven. So uh, we can, you know, do a little bit of simplification here, and we get that this first equation becomes 16a minus 4b plus c equals to minus 21. The second equation becomes a minus b plus c equals to 3. And the third equation becomes 9a plus 3b plus c equals to 7. And so we want to know what is a, b, and c? What are the values that will... Um, that will make this true about this sort of parabola that we're supposed to be graphing here. So we have now three equations and three unknowns, A, B, and C. So let's solve for them. I'm probably going to go about just doing it the kind of like, let's look for what's the nicest thing to solve for first. And I see that this second equation is rather nice. I could take this second equation at this point and solve for A or B or C. And I think that those would all be perfectly good choices. But um, C looks like it's the nicest because actually every single equation here has something nice with C. It's like one times C. That's very nice. You could solve for C in any of these equations. But since the second one looks like it really is the nicest, uh, it has either plus one or minus one as the coefficient on every one of the variables, I'm going to take the second equation and solve it for C. So we get C equals to three minus A plus B. Now I can put that into the other two equations, the first equation and the third equation, and reduce this to a system of two equations and two variables. So the first equation becomes 16A minus four B plus three minus A plus B equals to minus 21. The second equation becomes nine A plus three B plus three minus a plus b, which equals to seven. So then these guys simplify respectively to, let's see, 15a minus three b equals to minus 24. And let's see, eight a uh, plus four b equals to four, good. So then, I don't know, I kind of like this second equation, so I'll take this one here and let's try to solve for b. So uh, let's see, if we have 4b, if we subtract 8a from both sides, we have 4b equals to 4 minus 8 times a. And then we can divide both sides by 4 and we get b equals to 1 minus 2a. That's nice. So now I'll substitute this one into the equation above it and I get 15a minus three times the quantity one minus two a equals to minus 24. Okay, this one then we can uh, clean it up a little bit and we get 15a minus three plus six a equals to minus 24. That gives us a whole 21a equals to, well, adding three to both sides give us minus 21 on the other side. Ah, very nice. Now divide both sides by 21 and we get a equals to minus one. Great, so now if a equals to minus one, we'll go substitute back uh, to see what b needs to be. b is one minus two a, so that will be one minus two times minus one. 
So that is one plus two, which is three. And then C is supposed to be three minus A plus B. Well, now I have A and B. So I know C will be three minus minus one plus three, which is uh, seven. Okay, so now I have the sort of three coefficients for that uh, quadratic function. And we can say um, that F of X equals to minus one times X squared plus three times X plus seven. Notice we've got that this parabola opens downward, right? It has minus one as its leading coefficient. Excellent. Okay, so then just one more sort of more practical example here is about a movie theater. So the movie theater is showing a new flick and they sold 169 tickets. And there was three types of tickets they sold, adult tickets, child tickets, and senior tickets. So the prices are $8 for adults, $4 for children, and $3 for seniors. And all together, after selling these 169 tickets, they got $915 out of it. So then they want to know, what was the breakdown? How many adult tickets did they sell? How many child tickets did they sell? And how many senior tickets did they sell? And one more thing that we know is that the total number of adult and senior tickets sold was seven less than the number of child tickets sold. Okay, so, uh, I'm going to let A stand for adult tickets, C stand for child tickets, and S stand for senior tickets. So then we know three things now. We know all together they sold 169 tickets. So that's the number of adult tickets plus child tickets plus senior tickets equals to 169. They also told us that um, the, the prices for each kind of ticket and the total amount of money that they made off of this. So we get that eight times the number of adult tickets plus $4 times the number of child tickets plus $3 times the number of senior tickets will add up to $915. And then the one last thing that they told us was that the number of adult and senior tickets sold was seven less than the number of child tickets sold. That means that adult plus senior equals to child minus seven. Or if we like, we could just solve this one right off and write child ticket equals adult ticket plus senior ticket plus seven. And oh, that's great. So now I've already got one of the variables solved in terms of the other two. So I can go ahead and take this nice equation and uh, substitute in for C in the two equations above and immediately reduce this one to a system of two equations in two variables. So with this in place, the first equation becomes a plus a plus s plus seven plus s equals to 169. And the second equation becomes 8a plus 4 times the quantity a plus s plus 7 plus 3s equals to 915. Okay, so let's kind of clean these up a little bit. The first one becomes, looks like 2a plus 2s equals to 162. And the second equation becomes, let's see, it looks like 12a plus 7s equals to uh, 887. Okay, so that should be, I guess, 915 minus 28 will be 887. Okay, but oh, I like this. Look at the first of these two. It looks like everything is a multiple of two. So if I divide uh, both sides by two, I get A plus S equals to 81, which means that S equals to 81 minus A. Ah, very nice. So now I can substitute this in for S in the second equation. And we get 12A plus seven times the quantity 81 minus A equals to 887. Okay, so now uh, let's clean this one up a little bit here. We get 12A plus 567 minus seven A equals to 887. And so we'll have 5a on total on the left side, and 887 minus 567 is 320. Okay, so now we'll divide both sides by 5, and we get that a equals to 64. Great. And now that we know a, we can go back and find s. 
S is 81 minus 64, which is 17. And now that we know A and S, we can go back and find C. C will be 64 plus 17 plus 7, which is 88. So in total, they sell 64 adult tickets, 17 senior tickets, and 88 child tickets. All right. So that'll do it for today. Um, we'll see you next time where we'll tackle some systems of equations where the equations are not linear. So see you then.